Hey Sopranos fans, welcome to another Machiavellian Monday here on Soprano Street. In this series, we evaluate different Sopranos characters based on how Machiavellian they are, and this episode will focus on Patsy Parisi. Now, Machiavelli's book, The Prince, is known to have had a tremendous influence on mob culture, but it is actually much more specific than most people realize. It's not just a general notion that you should scheme your way to the top and that the ends justify the means. It's essentially a how-to-rule manual for current or aspiring leaders, detailing the most effective ways to deal with specific circumstances and different types of people based on Machiavelli's historical observations. So when evaluating different Sopranos characters, I will be looking into how they acted in certain situations and with certain people compared to how Machiavelli said they should act, and not just deciding who was the best schemer. When evaluating Patsy Parisi, we will, of course, start with a brief look into him at face value, but things really get interesting when you take a look at it through the lens of the popular fan theory that he was the one that had Tony killed at the end of the series. When examined from this point of view, many of his actions can be seen in quite a different context. But like I said, we'll start with a quick look at him in face value. Now from that perspective, he isn't very Machiavellian at all. The closest thing you could say about him that was, and even this is stretching and misrepresenting the intentions of the qualification, is that it is better to be seen as clement or mild, which compared to the others he was. This can clearly be seen during the meal where he was grieving over the death of his twin brother. Don't it happen that identical twins, a lot of times, they'll die within a couple of days of each other? That would have been okay with me, believe me. See, right there. How many of those guys would have taken that outlook or had that demeanor? None of them. Any of the others would have went on an angry tirade demanding blood. This ain't negotiation time. This is Scarface, final scene, fucking bazookas under each arm. Say hello to my little friend. Always with the scenarios. And this same mild demeanor is shown after Vito's outing. I'm not going to condemn the man off the water, some fucking douchebag from Yonkers. I could care less, basically. But even still, it's irrelevant because he showed no real desire or drive to lead. He seemed only mildly annoyed when Chris was made acting capo. First thing I'm doing is getting wings in my hair. And supported Tony through much rougher waters than most. Sorry, I can't stay. Happy birthday, huh? Thanks. Gentlemen, enjoy your dinner. See you, Tiki. Thank you. That was great. Despite the fact that he clearly knew Tony was responsible for his brother's death, the fact that he chickens out here on shooting Tony and instead just pisses in his pool shows him to be more cautious than bold. Now, this turned out to be very fortunate for him because the feds were watching, but it was not Machiavellian. Machiavelli said generally it was better to be bold than cautious, for good fortune is like a woman, a lover of men with the audacity to command her. Now, even when we start looking at this through the other lens here shortly, there's no way to view this other than he chickened out on shooting Tony. I very highly doubt he changed his mind in that moment and decided to switch to the long game strategy and start by pissing in his pool. I've been pissing in the fountain for 50 years. Even still, it can be argued that shooting Tony at that moment wouldn't have been Machiavellian because he who neglects what is done for what ought to be done sooner affects his ruin than preservation, and the killing of bosses wasn't being done at that time. So whether or not he should have or would have been justified in shooting Tony from a Machiavellian standpoint would be irrelevant because that is not what was being done at that time. Key phrase there. So what's Patsy to do then? Nothing? Well, according to Machiavelli, war is not to be avoided, but is only to be put off to the advantage of others. And what would Patsy need to have an advantage? He would need allies, co-conspirators, and timing. Now, as far as timing, at that point, he would have two main problems. The first, I already mentioned regarding bosses not being killed at the time. The second was, as Machiavelli pointed out, that conspiracies rely on pleasing the people. If the people are offended, it won't work, and pretty much all the main players at that time wouldn't have been happy. So what's Patsy left to do except work on the other two? Now Machiavellian strategy dictates that not only do you have to eliminate the old guard, but you also have to make allies out of the old influencers, and we might see this at play with both Chris and Vito. Chris would have made a good choice for two reasons. First, he knew that Chris wasn't involved in his brother's death from the meal. While he was definitely genuinely grieving at this point, he isn't stupid. It's quite obvious who in the room was in on it based on their responses, and Christopher wasn't one of them. 
The second reason is that despite how close they are, Chris always had a tumultuous relationship with Tony, and this can be seen even from the pilot episode. If he approached at the right moment, Patsy may have found an ally in Chris, and with that in mind, the theft of the fiber optic cable takes on a different dynamic. Now, it's easy to view that theft in any number of lights, but from a Machiavellian standpoint, that one move could have been an attempt to check three boxes in terms of creating turmoil between potential opponents, turning old influencers into friends, and using the proper means to do so, despite the fact that it didn't really pan out. It could and did create turmoil between Chris and Tony, and could easily be seen as an attempt to start winning over Chris using money. A lot of money in this shit. Oh yeah? although it backfired and also caused tensions between Patsy and Chris. At this point, you could ask why he didn't just give Chris some suits or an appliance like Little Carmine, but Machiavelli states to be generous with other people's money, not your own. It does not take away from your reputation if you squander that of others, but adds to it. It is only squandering your own that injures you. Now, this is an interesting statement in a mafia context because pretty much everything they have is someone else's, but I think the appropriate parallel here is that letting someone know of a scheme in which they can make some money makes you look good, whereas just giving things away can come off as desperate. Either way, the tensions between them eased, and eventually they got along, as evidenced by the fact that if Patsy really wanted to, all he had to do was tell Tony that Chris slipped up during rehab, and he could have killed him without anyone thinking twice. Now, if you need anything, anything at all, Patsy's going to be half a mile away from you in a motel. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Huh? Vito, on the other hand, would have made a good choice to attempt to ally with, although you would have to keep an eye on him, due to his ambitiousness. Patsy might not have even had to initiate the conversation. Vito could have done it and approached Patsy like he did with Eugene. It's not so silly when you think about it. I'm a top earner now. It's not out of the realm of possibility that I could be the boss of this family one day. In that light, Patsy's demeanor after Vito was outed may have been an attempt to salvage that alliance. But even if not, Machiavellian strategy dictates that you not be viewed as the bold one when it comes to punishment, and that's why he said to leave matters of reproach in the hands of management. The same sentiment that people remember who is bloodthirsty when it comes their time to be judged is echoed in real mob testimonies as well as the show. No one likes that cunt anyway. The problem is she's whacked this one, whacked that one. Never enough body count for Lorraine. Fuck, I'll let her taste her own medicine. So whatever the motive, that seems to have been the Machiavellian way to handle that situation. The problem Patsy would run into here is that even if he had Chris and Vito on his side before their deaths, the timing still wouldn't have been right. Tony still had too much support, and bosses still weren't being killed. The opportunity may have come during the Tony B situation, since there was some growing discontent, and of course Vito was right there to stir the pot. Unfortunately for Patsy, a few things happened during Raymond Curdo's party that forced him to push his move back even further. First, Vito's security slipped visibly. Second, Chris is away and may be a target. And lastly, Tony's speech seems to galvanize the troops, so Patsy was left with no choice but to postpone and continue to tow the company line, so to speak. Thank you. That was great. Which brings us to the finale, Tony's last day alive. At this point, the timing would be right for Patsy to make his move. War was at hand and bosses were being killed. Between Doc and Phil Leotardo, the precedent had been set, and whether or not he had allies, he would no longer face the potential backlash he would have before. Syl, Bobby, Chris, and Johnny Sack were all dead or in a coma. Butch was boss in New York, and it's doubtful he would have objected to Tony's death after this disrespectful move. Now, all Patsy needs is co-conspirators, and when it comes to them, Machiavelli points out that they generally come from malcontents, and if fortunes change, so will their allegiance. He also notes that when acquiring through secret favors, if their motive isn't a genuine affection for you, then they will never be satisfied. So who does Patsy have that would work for him purely out of love for him? His sons, Patrick and Jason. Jason shows an obvious penchant for the mob lifestyle and can be seen cozying up to AJ while also trying to pull him into the life. 
Um, now, wouldn't it be an interesting dynamic if AJ fully committed to the mob lifestyle after Tony's death, the same way Tony did after Dickie's? Tony would have essentially joined because his symbolic dad was killed by his blood uncle, and AJ would have joined because his blood dad was killed by his symbolic uncle. Um, but anyways... His other son Patrick had gotten engaged to Meadow, and though she claimed he had changed, she's also shown a willful blindness to that sort of thing before with Jackie Jr., so something similar to that may have been at play here. Regardless, both Jason and Patrick would have been in positions to get information on what Tony was doing, and as it so happened, he may have found out about Holston's through his son Patrick. So Patsy would have had timing, no resistance, co-conspirators, and access to the kind of information needed to make his move through persistent Machiavellian behavior and not being deterred by setbacks. Ultimately, if it was Patsy that had Tony killed, he would be an incredibly Machiavellian character, despite this display. Well, that does it for this Machiavellian Monday here on Soprano Street. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.